does five green heart logs in the compound of the Humaniana have to do with Namibia? Namibia is a country located on the southern part of the African continent. It is bordered by the Atlantic Ocean, Angola, Zambia, Botswana, and South Africa. Namibia's journey to independence was long and brutal. The African Liberation Monument remembers their struggle and that of other countries in Africa to self-determination and freedom, a struggle that continues today. The scramble for Africa took place in the 19th and 20th centuries. European powers, in a bid for more power and economic dominance, invaded, occupied, and divided the African continent in a short period between 1881 and 1914. This saw European control of the continent increasing from 10% to almost 90% by 1914. Namibia became a German colony in 1884 and was called Southwest Africa. Under occupation, the indigenous people's land was taken from them and they were forced into labor. The Herero and Nama peoples rebelled against German colonial rule from 1904 to 1907. In response, the commanding officer ordered annihilation of the Herero and Nama people. This was done through battle, starvation and thirst in the Omaheke Desert, forced labor, malnutrition, sexual violence, medical experiments and disease in concentration camps. Many historians consider this act as the first genocide of the 20th century and a foreshadowing of the Holocaust. Approximately 80% of the Herero and Nama people were killed. After the end of the First World War, Germany lost all her colonies and Namibia came under the League of Nations mandate system. This system gave what they considered a more developed country responsibility for the administration of a less developed former colony. The mandate was given to Great Britain, who in turn gave it to South Africa. South Africa ruled Namibia from 1915. Eventually, they introduced a apartheid system that they also had in their country. Apartheid is an Afrikaans word for apartness. Afrikaans is the language of Afrikaners, the South African ethnic group descended from European settlers. In Namibia, under apartheid, like South Africa, non-white citizens were forced to live in separate areas from whites and use separate public facilities. Contact between the two groups was limited. In the capital city, Windhoek, the main location was an area segregated for non-whites. During the 1950s, non-white residents were moved from the main location to a new location north of the city. This place became known as Katatura, meaning place where we do not want to live. This action caused an organized mass protest boiling over on December 10, 1959. The police opened fire on the protesters, killing 11 and wounding 4 to 4. This protest became known as the All Location Uprising and acted as a rallying cry for Namibian independence. After World War II, as most European colonies all over the world, finally received their hard-fought independence, South Africa continued to occupy Southwest Africa. While the white minority benefited from the country's economic growth, most of the non-white population lived in poverty fueled by South African imposed apartheid. At this time, nationalist organizations such as the Southwest African National Union, SWANU, and Southwest African People's Organization, SWAPO, were formed. In 1966, the UN terminated South Africa's mandate of Southwest Africa and in 1970 declared its continued occupation illegal. SWAPO formed their military arm, the People's Liberation Army of Namibia, PLAN, in 1962. On the 26th of August, 1966, eight helicopters of the South African Defense Force attacked guerrilla fighters. This is considered the first armed battle of the Liberation War. It would take an additional 24 years for Namibia to achieve independence on the 21st of March 1990. But it is these first acts of armed resistance that are celebrated on Heroes Day, also called Namibia Day. 
The African Liberation Monument, located in the compound of the Humaniana, was unveiled on Heroes Day or Namibia Day on August 26, 1974. At the time the monument was revealed, by then Executive President of Guyana, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham, the people of Namibia were still fighting for their independence from South Africa and white minority rule. The monument was Guyana's way of showing support to the liberation movement, not only in Namibia, but the entire continent of Africa. The simple yet striking design was done by Guyanese architect, Mr. George Henry, and is full of significance. The monument is made up of five polished bull forehead green heart poles of varying height, cast in a quartz stone known as jasper, standing on a granite boulder. The differing height of the poles signify the individuals belonging to the various age groups involved and affected by the movement for liberation over many years. The jasper and granite stand represent the strength of the freedom movement. The plaque in front of the monument reads, in memory of all those who have struggled and continue to struggle for freedom from human bondage. The African Liberation Monument deeply connects us with the great continent of our ancestors and reminds us of our collective and unending fight against the new colonialism that exists today.